New head of the Cedar Rapids School District says the new budget and district-wide review of school buildings and services are two of her top priorities right now. We talked with Dr. Tawana Grover as she heads her into her second week, I should say, as the superintendent of uh, Iowa's second largest school district, a district that is seeing declining enrollment, something she says Cedar Rapids can change. I think it really circles back to having more recent and more relevant conversations with parents and understanding what they view as priorities for their children's education in today's time, right? We're operating in a post-COVID world, what matters today, and of course, understanding how our facilities are designed to be able to create the learning environment uh, that will produce the type of graduates that we want in their students' everyday experiences. You said you wanna hear a lot from parents, and as you know, the Iowa State Legislature is doing a number of different uh, bills that make uh, uh, education more uh, open to members of the public to get involved, um, whether it's uh, publishing the book titles or, or whether it is parents getting more active in the education of each classroom. In some ways, I would think that's a good thing. In other ways, you might be worried that a small group of people may dictate how a school district operates. Are you at all concerned at some of the things that you've heard coming out of the Iowa legislature, or do you welcome this? Well, I think it's an opportunity. Everyone's voice uh, should have some level of volume to it where we can hear what their concerns are. Where we are in a unique position as a school district is really thinking about we're trying to set forth policies, a culture, and climate that is very inclusive for all of our students. And we're catering uh, to almost 16,000 students and making sure that our system runs in that way. Um, and my goal is to partner with our parents in making sure that we can come to to some collective understanding of how we're transparent about our policies as well as our procedures, but ultimately how we're creating a safe and inclusive uh, learning environment for our students. You're inheriting a budget process uh, that's already begun, um, but it does look like there's going to have to be cuts made in the Cedar Rapids School District. I, I believe approximately $2 million is expected. Um, but you don't want to cut services to students, but so much of the budget is teacher salaries and, and costs along those lines. Where do you think those cuts are gonna occur? And what do you see for the budget for the coming school year? Yeah, well, we're working very strategically um, as a leadership team. And our philosophy going into this process is that we want to stay as far away from our students um, for as long as we can. So the least impact out to our campuses when we're talking about cuts. And so right now we're strategizing and making sure that we're leveraging all of our resources, uh, whatever avenues we have coming in from federal resources. Uh, we still have some of the extra dollars for a year or so that we can continue to leverage, uh, really looking at uh, what programs we have in play, which ones are more effective, which ones are match our priorities and our needs right now, and really just taking a collaborative effort. I think that as we kind of take a look at our budget, not only for this year, but just really kind of doing some forecasting into the future as well. Are layoffs inevitable? At this point, we haven't discussed any layoffs. We're, as we just kind of mentioned the whole teacher shortages and making sure we have enough staff. Uh, I think we have people around the table that we're looking at where we allocate our staff members. And as I mentioned before, uh, right now we're just trying to make sure that we don't have to impact staff or students directly um, as we move into this uh, set of budget cuts that we're facing for the upcoming school year. You are at the beginning of a listening tour. Um, and of course, as long as you're an administrator here, it's gonna be an ongoing <laughs> listening tour, of course. Um, tell me a little bit about coming to Cedar Rapids, because it is relatively new for you. People aren't stopping you in the grocery store quite yet. Well, they were already stopping me in the airport the next day after I was announced, so, so that you know that. So, is yes, that so? Yes, people are already stopping me, absolutely. And saying what, and what they're do you wanna hear? Yeah, well, first of all, they're saying welcome. Now, I hear that welcome is the language of Cedar Rapids, and so I will say that that is true. Uh, people uh, 
seem to be uh, very proud that the Board of Education was able to settle in on a more permanent superintendent. And so I'm very happy to be a part of that process. I believe that people want the best uh, for Cedar Rapids Community School District. They understand the importance of the school district out in the greater community and how it's part of the bigger story. And so I'm super excited about that, uh, the developments that's happening here and how our school district can be a part of the future of Cedar Rapids. And Dr. Grover is scheduled to take part in an education roundtable tomorrow. Two Democratic state lawmakers, Sammy Sheets and Liz Bennett, hosting it at the Cedar Rapids Downtown Library. It's tomorrow evening. It starts at 530. And along with Dr. Grover, members of the Cedar Rapids School Board, also the Teachers Union are all slated to take part.